As I told you in the last video, we're going to pick up with the connection of the transformer wires to this mess. And we're also going to connect the ground wire for the uh, filaments and the, and the light bulbs. And uh, I was going to go ahead and just maybe try to connect it in here, uh, this ground here. But I'm just going to go ahead and stick it back in there. I don't know if you can see back in there, but there's a uh, an open tab that looks just like this one here. So I've stuck the wire in there and I'm getting ready to solder it up and that'll take care of the ground. Well, it was a tight squeeze, but we got her. She's nice and secure. We got us a nice ground there. All right. Now these two, but before I hook these two up, these two transformer wires, uh, the ends are really ragged looking. And uh, I'm going to try to dress those up and make them look a whole lot better. I hate to cut down <laughs> transformer wires. You know, you, you, you shorten them up, and then the next guy shortens them up. Next thing you go, you got little stubs there, and you have to turn around and splice wires on. But before I hook them up, I'm going to make sure that all of this is righteous again, and all of this is righteous. And if everything is good, then I'll go ahead and solder these where they're supposed to go. This one here is supposed to go uh, here between the two rectifiers. So I'll either solder it here or I'll solder it over here. doesn't matter either way as long you know it's the same electrical point. And uh, this one over here goes between the two capacitors which would be this point right there where that red one is. Let me get a pencil it'll hook right there all wrapped around there so that would make it between the two capacitors because the capacitor comes out and hooks to that terminal and then it goes out this red and white wire here over to the next capacitor so right there would be the point between the two well that's it I was pretty happy with the way everything was wired it all matched up with the schematic so I went ahead and stripped the ends back and put a nice neat end on this wire here and a nice neat end on that wire right there and soldered them up so everything here is now complete the transformer is now hooked to the filtering and rectifying network so let's go to the rear of this thing and see if we can't do something over here in the area where the uh, high voltage uh, transformer is. I don't know if you recall but remember that white and blue wire that was here that just broke apart as soon as I touched it when I started to strip the chassis? Well it's been replaced with a blue wire. I didn't have a blue and white striped but it's been replaced and we're good to go. So now I need to put some wire clamps in there and I couldn't find the exact size I needed but uh, these are wire clamps. What we're going to do is slide it under here. I'll have to put these in several places on the chassis. And then we'll take this and stick it down in there. We're getting to the point now where we're going to start dressing up this chassis a little bit, making it look, you know, halfway decent. And we'll get them on down in there. That'll hold that in. I have to put another one in right there where that bolt is. I don't know if you can see that bolt very well. Let's get this over here. I need to put another one in right there. Now, once we get uh, both of these anchored down, we're going to do something to this chassis to make it look snazzy. The first two cable clamps are in. There's more of those cable clamps that have to go in uh, in various places on the chassis if I can remember exactly where they went. I'll have to refer back to some of my videos to find out where they're at. I know that one of them goes over here on the side of the, the tuner housing, but uh, it might be at one in here somewhere. I'm not exactly certain. We'll figure it out as we go along. But anyway, these two are in. Now for the cool part. I got together with my buddy Wade a little while ago. For those of you who follow my vid, you know that Wade is the, uh, he supervises a chrome vat. 
set up and I asked him if he would do another chrome job for me. You know, small stuff, doesn't amount to anything. He said, sure, you know, he said, just bring it in, prepare it, you know, get it ready and then bring it in and I'll take a look at it and we'll run it through the vats if it's good to go. If not, we'll, we'll dress it up a little bit more and get it going. I said, okay, fine. So, what I want you all to see here is the new and improved uh, high voltage cage. Check this out. Huh? Nice and chromed. He did an outstanding job on it. One thing we did find out though, the metal on this part of the cage and this part of the cage is different than this metal. This metal took the chrome totally different. I don't know what the, what the difference is. It's totally different. Anyway, it looks really nice. Let's see if I can get a light over here to make it. Leak. So what I did was uh, before I sent it to the to the chrome vats, uh, I went ahead and scanned this warning here. You know, fragile glass picture tubes, dangerous to service. Blah blah blah. I scanned it on my computer, printed it out, and kept messing with it until I got the right size. And uh, we had to remove this heat shield here and uh, drill out. Uh, the, there was a, uh, a rivet in the top up here where that brass screw is. I drilled it out and replaced it with a brass screw and lock washer and did the same thing with this heat shield here. Uh, I had to drill out the, uh, the holes, remove this paper insulator of some kind. I guess it's a heat shield of some kind. I don't know what it is. And uh, went ahead and replaced it with brass screws also. So now what we're going to do is get it back in there but before we do I got one other thing. Right here was where this wire came through. Also the uh, wire comes through there that goes to the picture tube uh, from the horizontal output uh, tube to the picture tube and the rubber grommet that was in there would just crumble to pieces when I took it apart. So I went down to my handy dandy little local hardware store we got this one we'll go ahead and put that one in there fits perfectly so we're ready to go ahead and reinstall this and uh, that way when I start we're almost to the point where we're ready to work underneath the bottom of this thing now of course we still have to uh, restuff this capacitor can here and uh, I have some caps on the way I didn't have all the caps I needed to do that so We'll do that. Plus, I have some cleaning to do. A little bit of paint removal needs to be done down here on this one paint socket. I have no idea how paint got on that socket. I had everything taped. Anyway, it happens every time. So we'll do a lot, lot more dressing up. And uh, I'm not going to put the tuner in until this chassis is completely rebuilt underneath. You start flipping this thing that way and that way. Next thing you know, we got problems with the tuner. You mess up your tuner, you're out of business completely. And uh, so we'll go ahead uh, and uh, uh, put this thing together and install it back on the on the chassis. Uh, I also decided to uh, got one more thing over here. I also decided to pick up some more sheet metal screws instead of going with those old nasty ones that was holding the. Uh, I mean, if we're going to re-chrome it, we got to have some new screws, you know. Well, there it is, all put together, and I, I'm kind of glad I did that. It'll help protect that horizontal output transformer. I didn't want anything to happen to that thing while I'm flipping and flopping it around, working on the stuff on the uh, bottom. That looks pretty slick, I think. Let's turn around and look at it from the other direction. I, I think that, that chassis is coming along very nicely. I'm real, I'm real happy with it so far. This will have to, of course, be unwrapped, but... That thing, I can't wait for those capacitors to come in so I can go ahead and finish that up and get that restuffed. This one here, uh, it, it was in fact, oh, about a quarter of an inch uh, space after I put the lid on. So I just took, instead of using some cardboard, I took a piece of flashing. I cut a piece, oh, maybe an inch and a quarter wide and wrapped the flashing around, taped it, and then put the aluminum tape over the top. It's a little wrinkly, but you know. So what, you know, the idea is to get some nice caps in there and restuff it and it has been done. This one's next. 
Hello, all you people out there in Gameland. Today, we're going to play an exciting new game called Loop-A-Lot. Now, this is based on the scientific principle. You put your finger in the hole, then you take a penny. So you put it right there, or you spin it around. I drop my penny. I'll be, I'll be right back. You spin the loop a lot, you stop, or you still got the penny. Now, where did that penny go? You, you can do this with one penny or two. Hmm, where would I be if I was a penny? Penny? Aha, here we are. You see, it's the centrifugal force, the in going to the out, which keeps the penny in place. And, uh, <laughs> and then you get to be a super looper. You can use one, two, or three pennies. Loop-a-lot is a parker game. So is Monopoly. Oh.